Hi, my name is Bhaskar Napte and today we are going to talk about relative response factor or the RRF. So relative response factor is very critical parameters widely used during quantification of impurities in drug substances and drug product. So let us understand with the help of today's discussion how the RRF can be established. So to begin our discussion about relative response factor, let us understand the definition of first response factor or the RF. So the RF can be calculated with the formula of response of a compound divided by its concentration. This is the response factor for the given compound. Let us understand how the relative response factor can be calculated and here is the calculation formula for the relative response factor. Response factor of an impurity divided by response factor of an API. Understand one thing, we are going to calculate the response of an impurity with relative to the response of an API. We need to understand what is the difference between the response of impurity when compared with the response of API? That is the relative response factor for a given impurity. Now let us talk about the estimation of RRF by slope method. Now the slope method is widely used for estimation of RRF. And I am also going to explain the entire procedure followed by with one example so that we can relate the procedure very well and here are the steps of estimation of RRF prepare not less than five concentration solutions must be in the range of the linearity of your method both for impurities and APIs minimum five levels of the linearity solution needs to be prepared but very importantly they must be in the range of linear response and their concentration should be one and the same then calculate the slope of impurity and api i mean you will run the chromatography system and out of that you will calculate the response for api and impurity then you can plot a graph of uh, response versus uh, concentration the concentration should be at x axis being a independent parameter and the response should be at y axis being a being a dependent parameter so you will have the two graphs one for impurity and second for the api and once you calculate this graph you have to calculate the slope for both impurity and api and this is the calculation formula for RRF. RRF for an impurity is equal to slope of the impurity graph divided by slope of the API graph. You need to confirm the RRF by establishing recovery studies. So in case if you have a recovery limit of let us say 90 to 110%, apply the RRF factor for the accuracy study and confirm whether your recovery studies are within the 90 to 110 percent range or not. Now let us take an example of uh, calculation of an RRF and here I bring the excel sheet in front of you. Now here I have taken an example of an impurity A for estimation of RRF. So what you see in the excel sheet you will see the potency for impurity standard and potency for your API standard. It is very important you must know the potencies for impurities and the standards. Then I have prepared the stock solution for impurity A and the stock solution for the API standard. And these are the concentration of both of them. And I have preferred to calculate them in terms of PPM. So the impurity A stock concentration is 193.4 ppm whereas the concentration of API standard stock solution is 199 ppm. 
Now, what is the next step? I need to prepare minimum five linearity levels. And here are the levels. Level one. Okay, this must be level two, three, four, and five. So I have taken the one ml of impurity A stock solution and diluted it to 100 ml and this is my resultant concentration of the level 1. I am talking about impurity A concentration 1.934 ppm. What is the concentration of impurity A in level 2? It is 3.868 and I have prepared, prepared now all these 5 levels for linearity for impurity A. I injected this solution into the chromatogram and I found that the response for these five different solutions. Now this is my response. Similarly, I draw the linear graph and I have calculated the slope of impurity A and this is the value of the slope 79,989.66. Similarly, I have also prepared the linearity solutions for API solution, API. And these are the five different linearity levels for the API standard. I have withdrawn the 1 ml of API stock solution and diluted it to 100 ml which has resulted into 1.99 ppm. I prepared the rest of the four linearity levels and then I injected them into a chromatographic system and these are my responses. I calculated the slope for API which found to be around 1 lakh and then I have calculated the relative response factor for an impurity. What is the calculation formula? It's very simple slope of impurity A divided by slope for API which is found to be 0.799897. This is the procedure of estimation of RRF for any given impurity. I hope you understand it. Before we close this discussion, I would like to also reiterate very important thing is this. The concentration of impurity solutions and API solutions must be similar. So look at here, the level 1 for impurity A is 1.93 ppm, whereas level 1 for API is 1.99 ppm. Pretty similar, right? Just assume that if my potency of impurity A is just, let us say, 85%, just look at the concentration differences now. For impurity A, I have 1.7 ppm as a level 1 concentration. Whereas the concentration of API in the same level that is at level 1 is 1.99 ppm. Now you can see there is a significant difference between the concentration. So how to make sure, how to remove or minimize the concentrations? Probably I can weigh the more amount of impurities. Now how, how much it is? 1.87 versus 1.99 still it is not good i will say let us take 24 milligram of the impurities and now look at here 2.04 and 1.99 they are pretty close to each other so this is another important point you must consider while preparation of the stock solutions compensate the loss of potency for impurity while making the stock solutions now look at here, the concentration of stock solutions are almost one and the same, 204 ppm for impurity A and 199 ppm for API standard. Let us go back to our first presentation. Now why you need to establish the RRF? What is the purpose of establishing the RRF? And there are four important points. Impurity cost is very high and to avoid the impurity cost, you can use the RRF. So once you use the RRF, there is no need to use the impurity for further quantifications. Unavailability of impurities. So the cost is not a barrier for you. But what is the guarantee that the impurity required will be available for every analysis? Because they are not synthesized in very simple stages. 
and to avoid the non availability of the impurity you can use the rrf factor stability in solution form in case if your impurity is not stable in solution form you will have a very hard time in analyzing the sample for the impurity to avoid these consequences you can use the relative response factor and last but not the least difficulty in impurity synthesis in case if your impurity is not very easily synthesizable you have a very hard time in making it so the preferred way of avoiding all the challenges is calculating and using the relative response factor the point number 4 is very important that is calculation formula so what is the impact of using relative response factor in a calculation and here is the explanation so the corrected impurity response is equal to what impurity response into 1 divided by rf rrf so you need to use relative response factor in a denominator into your calculation formula i hope this presentation must have given you an overview of what is meant by rrf what is the procedure to establish rrf why we need to have the rrf and the final one is the usage of rrf in a calculation formula thank you so much